Today we're going to look at how to make this clock in After Effects with just one shape layer and some basic expressions. We'll build all the parts of this clock in just one shape layer. We'll cover some basic expressions and how to set them up for the clock mechanics. And finally saving it as an animation preset and reusing it in another project. This video is also time stamped so you can jump to any part if you want. And now let's begin. I start by creating a composition and set the time for 1 minute. Right click on the timeline and select shape layer. Now we have a shape layer but we don't have any shapes in it. Click this little arrow at the front to expand it. And click this little button next to add to add different elements. And add a group empty on the list. Go on to add another two groups. By selecting the group and press enter you can change the group's name. First, I'm going to create all the circle shapes of the clock. So that's the clock front, the rim, and also the centerpiece. To add a shape to the group, you have to select a group and then press this add button again. Now add the ellipse shape to the group. You can only see the outline of the circle because we haven't got any color in it. But if you expand this ellipse path, you could toggle the size and see the outline expanding. To add color, press the add button again and press fill. You can use the color picker to change to any color you want. To add the stroke to the shape, under clock rim, plus add and add stroke. Once you have changed the color of the stroke, you can connect the size property of the clock rim to the size property of the clock front. Now they're linked together. To create a centerpiece, what you do is create another ellipse under the centerpiece layer and just bring in another fill. Change the color. You cannot see it because now it's at the bottom. You just need to bring it to the top of the layer stack to see it. Open the size of the shape path and pick width this size to the size of the clock front. But we don't want them of the same size, do we? So we're going to alter the expressions by multiplying a decimal point at the end. I think a 0.1 would be good. It seems a bit too small, so I'm going to change it to 0.2. That means size wise, it's 20% of the clock front. So that's all the circles we need to create. Next are the hands. We're going to create the hour hands first. It's easy to do that first and then duplicate the layers. We're going to add another group and bring it to the top of the layer stack. Call it our hand. Expand it and then press add again. And this time we're going to add a rectangle element. Once you've done that, you can see the square shape outline in the middle. Click this little arrow before rectangle path, you'll see more controls and now you can adjust the shape. However, there's a problem as I expand the length of the shape, it seems to be expanding from the middle. What I really want is to have the anchor points at the bottom of the shape. To change the anchor points, I open up the transform group and bring up the Y axis on the anchor point. That seems to work, but I would like to use an expression to drive that. So whenever I change the size, the anchor point will stay the same. If you want to bring the anchor point to the bottom, we know that we need to bring it down half of the total length of the shape. So I pick with the anchor point back to itself and then open up the expression box. And in here we should have two values. One is the X axis and the other one is the Y axis. While the X value stays the same as zero for the second half of the expression, I pick with it to the second value of the size property. Then I divide it value by t because we're only moving half of the total length downwards. Now it should be working. Just add the fill to give it a bit of color so that you can see what the shape is like. By default, the color is always red, but I would like to change it to something else. You can see I've made a mistake here. The centerpiece should be above the hour hand layer. Now I can adjust the size of the hour hand and the anchor point will always stay the same. After that, I just press Command or Control B to duplicate the layer. And these are my minute and second hands. Whenever you duplicate a layer, the expressions within the layer are linked to the original properties. So we need to open them up and make sure that they're pick whipped to the properties under their own shapes. For example, when you open up the anchor point of the minute hand is linked to the size of the hour hand. What we need to do is to highlight the second part of that properties and then link it back to the size of the minute end properties. I'll change the color to green now so that you can see the difference. 
Now when you change the size of the minute hand, it changes independently and the anchor point is at the right position. To move it away from the hour hand, I'll just toggle the rotation value here. Next, I'll do the same with the second hand. Just make sure the anchor point properties is linked to the size properties under the same shape layer. Then I'll change the size and the color of the second hand and move it away from the middle. Now that's all the hands done. Next, I'll create a bars around the rim. I'll add the group again. Press enter to change the name to our bars and bring it up to above the cock front but below the hands and centerpiece. And under this hour bars, I'll create a rectangle again. Again, open up the shape properties and change the size. Make it visible. I'm going to fill it with a color. I'll keep the color as red for now. We're going to introduce shape repeater here. To do that, you just need to go to add and then add repeater. It appears at the bottom of the stack and it's duplicating all the shapes above. So we're going to move it into our bars group. By default, you're going to get a number of three, but I'm going to change it to 12 because there are 12 hour bars on the clock and under transform of the repeater group, I'm going to change position to zero and under rotation, you just type in 360 divided by 12. That's because we've got 12 hour bars around the clock. We can't see the change because we've got another three layers on top of it. Click this eye icons to disable those layers for now. They all concentrate in the middle. To expand them, just toggle this anchor point. However, that's still not right because when we increase the number on the anchor point, the anchor point is actually moving down. That's why you see the expanding downwards. To compensate that, we need to move the position value of the shape transform properties but not the repeater properties. You can see how these two numbers correspond to each other. That means we could set up another expression to drive this. So we could pick with this position properties to the anchor point properties, but multiply by minus one at the end of the expression. Now, no matter how you expand these hour bars, they'll always remain aligning to the center. So next, I'm going to duplicate this layer and make the minute bars. I'm going to just speed up this part because it's just the same process. What you have to do is to make sure you have 60 on the repeater and on the rotation, you have 360 divided by 60. So that is the design of the clock, all under one shape layer, but with different shapes. Now you can animate this clock. There are several ways. The most straightforward one is to toggle this rotation value under the transform properties of the shape. If you want to move the clock according to time, you could bring in the time expression. So just hold down Alt or Option and click this stopwatch before rotation to open up the expression box. That's because the time value is outputting a float number according to time. So when it's one second, it's one, two seconds, two, 2.5 seconds, 2.5, so on and forth. So when it's one minute, it's only 60 on the rotation value. But what we want is 360. That's why we have to multiply six here. Now the second hand is moving in real time. I'll have to introduce another concept in After Effects using slider controls. Click the layer, go to effects, expression controls, and bring in slider control in the effects control. Now link this rotation properties to this slider and select slider, press enter to change the name. I'm gonna just call it second hand. Using slider control is particularly useful when you have a lot of elements in your timeline, but you want to bring some of those controls up here in the effects control. For example, in this case, we use this slider to control the rotation value of the second hand. So I sidetracked a little bit to show you how to set up this slider control, but now let's get back to the rotation value of the hand. So next, we're gonna use the same principle to link up the minute and the hour hand. So under the minute hand shape layer, I'll find the rotation property again. This is the property that will drive the hand position. Then I'll pick with this property to the second hand rotation property. 
As soon as you do that, you see they're moving together. But that's not what we want. In a real clock, when the second hands move with full rotation, the minute hand only moves a minute. That means the speed of the minute hand is only 1 over 60 of the second hand. So we can open up the expression of the minute hand rotation and type in divide it by 60. Great, it seems working now. As I move up the number on the slider, the minute hand moves slowly in the same proportion of a real clock. Next, I'll try to give it a bit more control of the clock. So under the second hand rotation value, I'm going to type in plus value. That is going to add the original value back to this expression. Now we could drive the time by increasing the rotation value on the second hand, as you see here. Now on the hour hand, I'm going to use the same principle. I'm going to pick whip the rotation of the hour hand to the rotation of the minute hand and then divide the value by 12. That is because every time the minute hand moves a full circle, the hour hand moves 1 over 12th of the full circle. So at this stage, you should have a fully working clock, which is also mechanically accurate. I've shown you how to use time to drive the animation. We don't have to, we can use keyframes to drive the animation. So by setting up two values on the slider, we can have the clock move faster than real time. Now we have a fully working clock, but I would like to show you one more step, and that is this ticking motion on the second hand. And for that, I'm going to introduce the floor method. So at the end of this slider control, we're going to add forward slash 6, that means divide it by 6. We could see that slows down the time, but that's not what we want. Instead, we're going to add math.floor parenthesis. If you scroll down the timeline, you'll see how the numbers are changing. So with the floor method, all the numbers between 1 to 2 are floor down to 1, and anything between 2 to 3 are floor down to 2 until it hits 3. However, because we divided 6 earlier, so now to bring this second hand back to real time, we need to multiply 6. I also spent some time to bring all the controls into Essential Graphics so that it becomes a more good. People can use this in Premiere, but that would be a video for another time. And the benefits of doing this in one shape layer is that you could copy all the shapes and effects and save it as animation presets. This preset is also available for free under my Gumroad and Payhip. You'll find the link down below. So next time you want to reuse this animation preset, you just need to create an empty comp and then double click on the preset and voila, it's all there. So that's it about this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy editing.